Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before I get started with SmackDown Live, I need to say this and maybe talk a tiny bit about Raw before going to Raw, going, saying Raw, going to SmackDown. This is what you get when you're trying to think really hard on making sure you say the right stuff and you box the damn thing. This is what my life is. Anyway, I got to say this because as far as I know, no one has mentioned it yet because we've heard rumors that AEW will appear on Fridays. We already heard that SmackDown Live will appear on Fridays, and far as I can tell so far, Impact Wrestling has not stated they're changing their time slot or their day of their time slot, which is still Fridays at 10 to 12. So here's the thing for me personally. We don't know if this is all going to be a huge cluster on a Friday night after October to November and December. AEW may appear by the end of the year, maybe November, October, November, December. We know SmackDown Live should start on October into November. And Impact Wrestling has not stated anything. So I'm already saying this right now that I need to know exactly what I'm going to be doing at the end of the year. Because I can't watch three shows at once. One show has to be primary, while the other two shows will have to be recorded two days later. Because you're going to have the Friday night show of whichever is going to be either AEW, Impact Wrestling, or SmackDown Live. Then Saturday's show. And then possibly a Sunday show. Because that's a lot to look at. Looking at two shows back to back on a Saturday. I'm not going to lie. That's a lot to take. And I'm usually trying to do things on the weekend. So it's going to probably be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I'm probably not going to get any views. And I'm alright with that. I, I hope you guys will want to watch this stuff. But I'm just making it clear. It's going to come down to that type of schedule. And I haven't heard anyone else really admit this. Because, well, we still don't know. This is all still speculation and rumor. And things can change on Impact side. On, on AEW side. And SmackDown side. But I want to know what you guys think. Because this is what I want to do. I've always made, made it important that Impact be really primary at the end of the week. So I'm still going to probably do my Impact reviews. When it comes to AEW and SmackDown, that's going to be a bit of a, bit of a toss-up. It's easy to say AEW should be first before SmackDown. But I want to know what you guys think. Should it be SmackDown on Saturdays or Sundays? Or more than this. I normally do my Impact Wrestling on Saturdays. Maybe you guys want me to do AEW on a Friday, then do Saturday Impact, and then Sunday SmackDown, or vice versa. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about SmackDown being Saturday or Sunday, AEW being Friday, Saturday, or Impact Wrestling being Friday, Saturday. I know that sounds like a lot, and we still don't know, but I thought it's better to ask this now. Because why do you want to wait until the last minute? They say sometimes it's important to be prepared. Now, a quick talk about Raw. Didn't watch it much. I heard that it was good at the end. Still don't care. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Let's get into SmackDown Live. Was the show good? Uh, it didn't really hype me that much for the pay-per-view. And I'm not going to lie. The pay-per-view still doesn't interest me much. And it should and this is the major issue I got with Raw and this week's SmackDown. Doesn't mean they didn't try to build into it, but because of how they're booking both shows, Raw and SmackDown are so screwed up right now. You don't know what to think of this company. Do you actually have no more brand split? Do you actually have a brand split? We now know, and I just heard what people have been saying about Universal, which, is a, which USA is a part of. They want to end the brand split and... WWE does not. So you wonder what the hell is going on here. It just feels so confusing how to feel. So this is how I felt about this show. It felt a bit confusing. This is on you. I think might be the best title of this of this show. Of this review. Let's, let's go to the opening of the show. Which I didn't really get a chance to see because my stream dropped. Only thing I saw at the very end. I saw... Hmm. You got the... True Bloods, I believe they're called now. The Usos and Roman Reigns. The New Shield is in front of you, ladies and gentlemen. The True Bloods or the the New Real Bloods, whatever, of Roman Reigns, of Jimmy and Jey Uso. They're gone there. 
I knew they'd go there. I had a, I, I realized once they start pairing up Jimmy and Jay with Roman Reigns, they're doing this because they know he needs support cast. Because he's not getting over. So you got that. And then you have basically Daniel Bryan with Eric Rowan. You got Elias and you got Shane McMahon. And then The Miz, which was really the saddest thing there. And I'm going to go straight to the match. Three to four handicap match. The True Bloods, I believe they're being called. Versus Shane, Brian, Eric, Elias. And if I remember correctly, the heels won. And then the Miz comes out to destroy them along with the Usos and Roman Reigns afterward. I'm not even going to fill in the blanks. You guys have seen it. You don't need to. Was the match good? I saw some of it. I actually saw almost all the match. I'll give it to you like this. The Usos were the ones who made the match. Roman wasn't the main issue there. Even though he was supposed to be. I, it, it's kind of confusing here. Because you wonder who is the main emphasis here. Is it Shane McMahon with The Miz? Is it Elias with Roman Reigns? Is it The Usos going up against Rowan and... Br what I, it's in my face. They're going to be, this is the thing that gets me with the Usos. They re-signed again with the WWE and look where they're acting. Look where they're going. Look where they're going to be performing at the kickoff show of Money in the Bank trying to get the SmackDown Live titles. Now many people will say, well maybe they're trying to merge the titles. Let the Usos win on SmackDown. They're on Raw. They go to Raw. They face against... Zack Ryder and the incredible Kurt Hawkins. No, yeah, that's them. And they're trying to merge the titles. Come on. If they're going to do the merging, they would have done it a while ago. I'm just being honest here. Like I said, finding out now that USA Network, Universal, and Fox Sport want the brand split ended and the WWE either are trying to book it to try and end it and they're doing so sloppily. Wouldn't it be important to put that on the show, that match? Trying to emphasize that the tag titles might be merged together? It just feels like nothing. And like I said, the person that felt the saddest in that entire match was The Miz. Not because he had to be left out of it, because if he was there at ringside, if he interfered at all, the steel cage match would not happen. That's not the thing. The thing is that all of this craziness with the wild card rule should only apply to one person on both rosters and it's Mike Mizanin. This would be a great feud if only The Miz was allowed to go between brands and go after Shane McMahon because they're trying to emphasize it but with the wild card rule it means nothing. The Miz feels irrelevant because they have this stupid rule that four people are supposed to come when there's more than four. More than four have been appearing on both shows. I don't even know how many people appeared on this show. I don't. I don't. Isn't Lacey Evans supposed to be on Raw and she was seen on SmackDown? Let me, let, let me see if I can remember correctly how many people appeared. You had Lacey Evans. You had Ricochet. You had The Usos. You had who else was there? I, I, I forgot. There was somebody else. I don't even know who else was on that show that probably wasn't supposed to be there. I just don't know. I don't... Oh! Roman Reigns. Five people! I just remembered. No, wait a minute. Roman Reigns is supposed to be on SmackDown. I take it back. But he feels like a Raw guy. So that means, weirdly enough, he's the fifth guy if they're emphasizing him so damn much on Raw. I can't tell when he's on Raw or SmackDown anymore. He doesn't feel... He, he does not feel like a SmackDown guy. He should feel like a SmackDown guy, but because he keeps jumping back and forth from Raw, where is he a SmackDown guy? He feels like a Raw guy that's visiting SmackDown instead of a SmackDown guy visiting Raw. Let's move on. We had a match. Fatal 4-Way. Sierra Almos versus the Mustafa Ali versus the Randy Orton. Guess what? I forgot one person in that match until I saw his damn face coming down to the ring. I'm going like, wait a minute. There's supposed to be four guys. Who's the fourth one? I can't remember. Now I remember Finn Balor. 
Finn Balor feels so blank. Blank. Empty. If anyone's happy with Finn, more power to you. But tell me the reason why you like him as he is now on SmackDown Live with the IC title. What is different with him being on SmackDown? Is it just because the match quality is a bit better with new people? If that's it, well, more power to you. But if, if Finn's supposed to be something special, wouldn't it mean that he'd change up his character or better yet, be allowed to change his character like showing the freaking demon, showing that his rage, that he has tried to get the world, the, he wants the world title instead of the IC title. Let's say he's happy with the world title, but he wants the freaking IC title. He wants that damn title so bad, he's beginning to go crazy and the demon starts showing. Wouldn't that be more compelling? I don't even care about who won the match. Actually, I do know it was Sierra Omos. And that's due to the fact of Charlotte. And here we go. We had Charlotte come to the ring talking about Becky. Now, I don't know if anything happened. I lost the stream right after the, prom the video package started showing between the two that Becky's trying to explain about how she was dealing with Charlotte. Charlotte trying to explain about Becky, which actually doesn't make any sense at this point. You do not need to rehash their past. You just need to make this an ending. But guess what? They can't. There is no women on the rosters from either SmackDown or Raw that is compelling. There's only one woman that I can think of in WWE that could be interesting. And that's Shayna Baszler. And it's shocking I remember her. But guess what? Since... I haven't watched the product of NXT maybe 8 to 9 to 10 months now. It's been almost 10 months. I don't even see the pay-per-views. But I still remember Shayna Baszler, the real MMA fighter, not Ronda Rousey because Shayna's the only one that's been built properly. She's the only woman in that company that legitimately has been built properly. Not just brought in and had to train and learn, even though she's gifted, and that is Ronda Rousey. Shayna Baszler is the real deal. And she's the only woman I see that can be a true threat to Charlotte and be a true, 100% a true threat to Becky Lynch. And not an NXT guy. But at least I know that Shayna Baszler is the best person to use. And let's move on. And I want to make this clear. And I think it's time to get this one done before I move on. I saw the video package of Bray Wyatt in his fourth or is it fifth episode of the Firefly Funhouse. I saw it. And it was cool. But as I said it before, why are you getting hyped for it? Why? You can say it's cool. But until, and I repeat this again for anyone that tells me below, dude, just take it. It's incredible. It's going to work out. No. Didn't they say that now? How many times with Bray Wyatt? One, when he first came in with the Wyatt family. Two, when he was by himself. Three, when he was by, when he went back to the Wyatt family with Daniel Bryan. Four, when he was by himself. Then with Jeff Hardy, five. And then notice a little bit more with, with Randy Orton. That would make six. Six times they rebooted the damn guy working with somebody. With his character. And in the end, it went... Pfft. That's where it went. Nowhere. Until I see him start winning matches, I'm going to keep saying the very same thing. It means nothing. You can tell that to the next man. You can tell that to JD. NY206, you can tell that to anyone else that is a YouTube reviewer like myself, who's way bigger and way better than me. This tiny little YouTuber who sees things a little differently, who does not buy a damn thing from the WWE. I am not saying this is an amazing thing that's going to work or WWE, don't mess him up. No, I know they're going to mess him up until they show me he doesn't get messed up. I know he's going to get messed up. So unless you can convince me otherwise, which you probably won't, because he's had six tries. And there's probably more in between that I'm not remembering. That he's been given tag titles. That he's been given a world title. Given the, he's been given titles which meant nothing 
tell me how the hell this time because a promo said a no better than mm, it angers me about Je Matt Hardy I'm about to say Jeff it angers me about Matt Hardy and a broken brilliance it was so damn good and it could have gone somewhere and they could have made money in a freaking company and they didn't give a damn let's move on oh that angers me I'm sorry let's go to the next match which really didn't mean much the t <laughs> you know, seeing Paige with Asuka and Kyrie, if they had gone all the way with it and repackaged them both as Kabukis, I promise you it would be very stereotypical, but it would actually make sense. They're both Japanese and she wanted them to be totally different than what they were as they were on both NXT roster and the WWE's. SmackDown and Raw rosters if they had just done something that was Kabuki. Hell, if they stopped playing both their musics on Kyrie's music, then Asuka, then Kyrie, then Asuka, then it sounds horrid. If they'd done something different, maybe Kabuki music instead of both their musics, making them dress as Kabuki's. Maybe it would be something different. Nope. They come out as themselves and uh, Kabuki Warriors would only work if they look like Kabukis. I'm being honest. Then, you have the Iconics at ringside. Finally, we get to see them. Which don't mean much. They don't mean much. Where were they? Where have they been? Nowhere. They want to rough when I understand. And this is the first time in weeks we've seen them on SmackDown. So, I know they have matches with Kyrie. I know. I'm just saying, as a tag team, doing something as a tag team, not as individual wrestlers. Now, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. What did we actually get? Now, what was it? We got a match that was semi-okay, but a bit botchy. And then, you got at the very end... A Mandy Rose telling Sonya after she knocked Oscar to the ground and she was going to do it. She said, tag me and I got it. I got this. Go in and guess what? She gets rolled up and pinned. And she's supposed to be in the ladder match. What's the point? What are they trying to, to prove here? They're not trying to show Mandy and Sonya fighting one another. Fire Desire is supposed to be rock solid. So why would you have her do a roll-up win instead of just letting Kyrie do the insane elbow or just get the Oscar lock on her instead of her looking like a freaking idiot? I'm saying Indian. An idiot. 100% an idiot. What was the point? They're in my face. That look on her face says it all. Now, let's move on. Oh, almost forgot. Lacey Evans. When I was talking about um, Becky and Charlotte, I forgot to probably put the image in of Lacey. Was her promo good? I don't care about her. Because the only thing she did was walk back and forth. Anybody else? I've been hearing say, oh, we like Lacey. She's not so bad. Oh, some people on NXT get over. That aren't really good. They get over. Well, could it be that when the WWE pushes them properly, at least to a certain extent, they actually get over? Could that actually be the reason Lacey is actually doing semi-good, no matter if she's not very great in the ring? Could it be because the WWE is actually pushing her properly? Have you guys actually thought about it? Delex man, Alex, I like you. You're really smart and you're more understanding of wrestling than me, even though I've, I'm, I've been alive longer than you. You know what you're doing, but you actually think, well, she's doing great. And he honestly says that people who don't do well on the roster of NXT... Do great on Raw or SmackDown. Well, guess what? The reason they do great on Raw and SmackDown is because the WWE actually pushes them. Why do you think Elias is getting all this airtime? Hell, Baron Corgan, the lone wolf, wasn't 100% great. Even though he was Gruger and he was doing pretty good, they screwed him up. And then they rebuild and screw him again and rebuild him. And now he's screwed up again. Now, moving on to the end of the show. If I'm forgetting anything, Alistair Black. Again, the same as before. He didn't even need to do a long-winded story. 
or speech. He just needed to say, I'm coming. You see me. I'm coming for you all. Fade to black. The lights go out. Do you actually have to go long-winded with him? The Dutch destroyer doesn't need to be long-winded. He just feels like someone that needs to be short, sweet, to the point. Not because he can't talk. It's because he doesn't need to. His actions speak better than his words. Now, Kopi on the KO show. Well, this was an interesting situation where some of my stream dropped and some of my stream did not drop. Hmm. Seeing them try to hype up Kopi was good. He was the one that came out first before Kevin Owens. Interesting. People were screaming for the Kopi show, which I don't want to see. Please, no. Please, by the great spirit, no. I don't want another talk show. Don't we have enough of those? The WWE is now high on talk shows like Johnny Carson. If no one doesn't know what Johnny Carson is, he was, he was basically the king of the talk shows before anyone else. And this is like a model of his work. And I guess Vince McMahon wants talk shows now on his shows. Ugh. It's supposed to be special and they're just garbage. Anyway, Kopi talked pretty well. But Kevin comes to the Titantron and pretty much says to Kopi, You know, your story is so inspiring. And then he starts talking about him having the moment with the New Day and his family. Please, stop. You're oversaturating it. You're making it feel... This, this is why I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of them talking about Kopi and his accomplishment. Look, I'm part black. One of the reasons why everyone likes him when he won is because it was the first African to win a damn title. That was something important. I'm happy about it, but more, more than happy because I actually did like Kopi like really a lot. I thought Kobe was a damn good untapped talent and he deserved a world title. And I'm glad he has the WWE title. But when you do this, you oversaturate him and make him look like he's nothing. You get sick of hearing, him, oh, that moment, that moment, it's dumb. You don't kill a horse that way. You don't beat it over a head with a stick over and over again when it's beginning to die. You're supposed to just let it die. Let that part end. Let the horse just die instantly. No. You try to make the horse live longer. You gave him drugs to stay alive. And then you beat the damn thing until it finally dies. Not of exhaustion, but torment. This hurts. Now, was the segment good? Yes, it was. What Kevin said was very poignant. You're on your own now. Let's see if you can handle yourself. And then my stream dropped, and the only thing I saw was when he came out, Kevin Owens, Kopi came out of the ring and started attacking him, and then Sami Zayn appeared. Now, I'm not surprised to see Sami. 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 I'm not surprised to see him. It's not surprising they were paired him up again, which I think they shouldn't have. I would rather see Sami by himself, but since they have messed him up, by making him job to Braun Strowman, even though I did hear yesterday he had a really good match with Braun Strowman. It does matter to me. You made him job by throwing him into a garbage truck a few about a week or two ago. I don't care. In the end, Kobe comes out to help him. Doesn't work. Then Kobe rises to beat them both up, and they both get pushed back. I'm going to be honest here. Am I interested in Money in the Bank because of the show? No. Am I interested in a few matches? Yes. Kopi's match. I want to see what's going to happen to Becky. Is she going to job and lose both titles? Or worse, she's going to actually keep both titles and it will still mean nothing because she has no real challenger. And... Huh, don't really care that much other than that. I don't. I know I could say that Miz and the Steel Cage match with Shane, but it's just... Maybe I'm just frustrated because of the stupid wild card rule which ruined the Miz's own momentum. If he was the only one going back and forth between Raw and SmackDown, this feud would actually mean something. But everyone's going back and forth, their mother, and instead of being fourth, five, five guys. Five. Five. And I think it's six. I can't remember. I don't. I'm, you get my point. Tell me how you feel below. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.